Now let's take a look at an example that highlights these different rules we've talked about. We want to find the indefinite integral, in other words, it's asking us to find an antiderivative, okay? And it also says to check your answer. How are we going to check our answer? Well, we're going to take the derivative of the answer we came up with. That should give us back the same thing that we started with inside the integral sign. All right, so what we'll do first is we're going to be using that first formula I mentioned on the board where you raise the power by one, divide by the new power. That's the, the uh, reverse power rule, I guess you could call it. We're going to use that on this one. So once you actually apply that formula, you don't need to write the integral in the dx anymore because this will end up giving you your answer. So we're going to go right into writing the formula. I have 4x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the power by 1. So I'm going to do 3 plus 1 will give me 4. Then we're going to divide that by the new power. So we're going to be dividing by 4. Next, I have 6x. going to raise the power by 1 to the third power. Then divide this by 3. Okay. If I have a number that's by itself, we talked about one of the formulas says that a number by itself, you're just going to get an x put next to it. And don't forget, you need to put the plus c on it. This is going to simplify to x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 3x plus c. So this right here, this is your answer to that question. This would be the antiderivative. Now, if I want to do a check on it, to do a check, I would just take the derivative of my answer. 4 comes down, x, subtract 1 from that power. Then I have uh, the 2 here, 3 comes down, subtract 1 from that power. If I have a minus 3, by, uh, with an x next to it, it turns into minus 3, derivative of c is 0. Notice if I simplify this, I will get exactly the same thing I started with inside the integral sign, so then I know it's going to be correct. So now, let's take a look at another example. Okay, we have another one that we're going to do the same process. We want to use the antiderivative formula. Now, the way this is written here, it's probably better to, to turn all this into powers, and so that way we know what power to raise to 1, divide by a new power. So, we're going to first just change this. I'm going to make, turn this into negative exponents. So that one's going to turn into 3x to negative 2. Now this one, I have a minus 1 fifth. Now the x that's on the bottom, and a square root we know is a 1 half power. So I can write this as x to the negative 1 half. And then I have plus 3 fourths. So I have all this dx. And now I'm ready to take the inverse power rule. You raise the power by 1. That's negative 1. Divide by the new power. Next, I have a 1 fifth, and I'm going to apply the formula to the x to the negative 1 half. Raise the power by 1, so I'm adding 2 over 2 to this, which means I'll get x to the 1 half. And I want to divide all this by 1 half. If I have a 3 fourths by itself, that means it'll just get an x next to it. Don't forget to put the plus c. Let's do a simplifying step here. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this. That's negative 3. I'm going to write it actually as negative 3 over x. This one, if you take negative one-fifth times, or uh, divided by one-half, it'd be like one-fifth times two over one. So you're going to get a two-fifths here, so minus two-fifths, and I could write this back as a square root there, x to the one-half. And then I have plus three-fourths x plus c. This would be the simplified version. This would be put for your answer. We want to do a check on this. Okay, so check means that I would take the derivative of what I see uh, right here. So remember, what I had before was 3x to the negative 1 minus 2 fifths x to the 1 half plus 3 fourths x plus c. This is what it would look like, uh, if not in this form. And this is what I can use to check my answer since i got to take a derivative of it. Okay, for this one, negative comes down to here. I would get 3x to the negative 2. This one I would have minus 2 fifths times 1 half x and I would subtract 1 from this if I'm checking it. So again, the, my check is taking the derivative of my answer using the regular power rule. Okay, so then this would be x to the negative 1 half and now I get plus 3 fourths. Derivative of c is going to be 0. Notice what do we get here? We get exactly the same thing as what we have here. 2's would cancel and you get the same thing that we had inside the integral sign. So again, it verifies that 
this right here in the box, that would actually be your answer as the antiderivative.